All right, hey everybody, this is Tyler, aka Grey Lethal 16, and today I have Daryl Gilbo with me. Hello. Did I pronounce that right? You did. You Fantastic. did. Fantastic. You did not, so I appreciate you pronouncing it. I practiced. <laughs> Practice makes perfect. Thank exactly. you, thank you. All right, so I've got a handful of questions yes. for you, and then of course, as if you give any really interesting tidbits, I'll probably have some follow ups for those just in the no moment. Worry. Super organic. Um, so my first question is, how did you find yourself here at Chronecocon? Um, I, I was invited. That's a good thing. <laughs> you know, actually, this is my, my, my third appearance here. Mm -hmm. um, I was actually at the very first con they did, and it was over, I don't know the name of the college, but it was, they were at, uh, there were students at college, it was more like, a, I guess, you know, a program there, mm -hmm. and uh, people who were in the anime at the college, and they helped hosted it there. So it was the first con, it was small, and I had, I had a really great time. And then the second year, they asked me back, and I came back, and even after the first year, it grew. So it was actually at the convention center the second year, which is amazing. That's scaling, so, right? Yeah, and so now I'm, I'm back on my, my third time. Nice, so do you MC yet? I mean, goodness. No, I'm not much of an MC -er. I'm good with, like, I, I do host my own panel, mm -hmm. which is, it's not a Q&A that I do for Do Rah, Rah, Rah It's kind of just impromptu, spontaneous, and I, I have a lot of um, involvement with the audience and stuff. So nice. that's kind of the closest I get to MCing anything. Cool. All right. Um, so you've been here a couple times. You've been, this is your third year. Um, so I mean, you've been coming since the beginning. What what draws you to a particular con? Is there anything that you look for when you're looking through all these options for places yeah. to go across the country? Well, I mean, I love going to different places. That's for sure. But um, I also like places that sort of have a family atmosphere in terms of like um, the staff feels like a family. The fans feel like a family. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You see some of the same people like. Many of the same fans that I've seen for the past two years come up to me still. That's awesome. You know, so that's always gratifying, you know? So. And then, <clears throat> do you have a favorite dish when you're in town? Well, <laughs> my big thing is always Dutch Brothers coffee. Because <laughs> we don't have that in LA. I don't know why. It's always have to have in Washington. Them. Yes. It's a thing we're known exactly. For. So I have to get my Dutch Brothers. Nice, nice. And then when you started out in the voice actor industry, mm -hmm. did you ever envision this level of success? No. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, when you're, I, I started out being an actor, mm -hmm. and when you're young and, and kind of starting out, you really kind of have an idea of how you think it's supposed to go or how you hope it's going to go. But like with most things in life, you know, life will take you where it wants to take you sometimes. Mm -hmm. So I think what got me mostly to where I am is, is sort of allowing it to happen and not trying to make things happen the way I think it should. I mean, still showing up, doing my best, but no, I, I never would have thought, actually, that being a voice actor would have been, been such a big part of my acting career. Oh yeah, it's, it's crazy how th those things can happen, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, here's a fun one. Yeah. What's the easiest role you've ever voiced? Just flew, it just kind of... Easiest role. It just kind of rolled out. You know, actually, Hakuru and Magi, was not easy, but for whatever reason, I, I felt it, it, there was just a connection with who he was for some reason, and an affinity. Yeah, an affinity, you know, with him, and um, so for, I would I would say him. Cool. And then on the other side, was there a exceptionally difficult role or one that really took a lot to make happen? <sighs> you know. Um, a Maimon was actually a challenge in Blue Exorcist mm -hmm. because, you know, a lot of times we have to be a little close, of course, to the Japanese, mm -hmm. but also uniquely our own because we can't just imitate. And a Maimon was a little bit of a challenge because, you know, sometimes you're used to like a demon being like a demon, mm -hmm. right? But a Maimon was kind of innocent in a demonic way. <laughs> You know, that's how I look at it. I recall. Him. Yeah, I remember. So he was just kind of, you know, that was his life. He And I found that sometimes to be a challenge to kind of keep him at that. So you had to replicate certain yeah. dynamics of the original source. Yeah. Now in the video game world, it was very difficult, beautiful Joe, because of just his energy and his high-pitched voice and yeah. trying to maintain that, you know, throughout. Being up here yeah. on all takes? Oh, yeah, yeah I bet. Exactly. Because he's, he's never, you know, low-key. <laughs> no, I've, I've never seen an underwhelming, beautiful joke yeah. ever. Yeah. Um, is there any particular method acting or way you get into any given role? Um, I, I, it, it depends on even the um, genre. 
you know, because like if you're doing theater, of course, you have a lot more time to develop a character, so you can really start slow. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes if you're doing a film, you might have a little more time. Voice work, sometimes you're just thrown right into it. <laughs> and sometimes it does take a little time to start feeling like, okay, yeah, I know who this guy is, you know. Um, I mean, I try to just rely on, on instincts and, you know, and empathy. Empathizing with the character and feeling what the character is feeling. The That's biggest really details of the character may be yeah. between the lines. Right. Yeah, exactly. That's sometimes, not why I picked that up. Well, that's true. Because sometimes <laughs> they're saying something, but they actually mean something else. Or they're thinking something else. So or what, what are they really saying? Exactly. There's some nuances, especially yeah. since you're taking source material from maybe a Japanese right. comic to a Japanese cartoon exactly. to an American localization. That's exactly. There's a lot of um, yeah. there's a lot to pick up there. Yeah, and then sometimes you know they'll have you do it different ways because, you know, they might be unsure. Like they'll say, okay, well he's feeling this, so you do it that way. Then okay, we're not doing it that way. <laughs> he's actually this. So you're like, oh, you know, so you have to change it right then and there, and you even ch are changing what the character's motivation is sometimes at the drop of a hat. Oh, wow. Now I've heard that typically what will happen is you'll come in, you don't always hear in advance a lot of information, right. and you'll get a paragraph, the director will give you a paragraph maybe 5, 10, 15 minutes before, and they're like, okay, read this and familiarize yourself and yeah. go. Yeah, basically. Wow. <laughs> and sometimes you don't even get that, sometimes you're just, okay, go in and do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, since you've done Beautiful Joe, and you, yeah. so you've done some fighting games as well, I've heard those are, when they make new renditions, those are kind of simple because sometimes you can do the recordings from home if there's right. any new grunts or, Ugh, you know, yeah. or you know, only so many noises where you get hit in the game. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the, are those something that happened? Or? I, I've never done any from home. I've always had to go to the studio to do it. I don't know if LA sometimes is a little different than mm -hmm. other places, but um, with LA, like, because most of the video fighting ones have been a lot of Dynasty Warriors, and they always call you in. And of course, uh, Marvel vs. Capcom, we did in the studio. <laughs> So. All right, cool. Um, and then on the note of friends, family, and fans, mm -hmm. how have they impacted your voice acting career? Well, friends, most of my friends don't know that what the heck I do. <laughs> do you keep it on the DL? No, it's just that, you know, it, I think if you're not into it, you may not just realize the, the, the culture around it. Like the folks walking around yeah. outside the convention right. walking by. You might just like, what, what is that? that? Yeah, what is that? Oh, that's kind of interesting. What is that? You know, I mean, definitely friends who know what I do and, you know, when they see my postings, love it. They think it's great. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I don't think even my family's aware of that I'm really known a little bit in this world for this kind of stuff. Uh, my mom is funny, though, because she'll, if it's on, like, Cartoon Network, like, some of the stuff, like, do rah, rah, rah or... Mm -hmm. I think Blue Exorcist, she'll watch, she's watched it on Cartoon Network, yeah. She's like, yeah. I heard your voice right, on Right, TV. right, Sometimes she's like, like with Jumara, so that woman on the motorcycle doesn't have a head. I'm like, uh -oh. you know, so there's, you know, she's trying to understand. <laughs> so that stuff is funny. Oh, yeah. yeah. And now, of course, the fans, though, that's been the, um, I don't know, the biggest inspiration, because when I first started doing it, you know, you just go into a booth and you don't know if anyone's listening or watching. You or, send it out into space. Yeah, you just send it out and it's gone. You go on with your life and you do more and more. And, and it, when I first started going to cons, you know, that was when I started like, oh, wow, people do watch this. And, you know, for me, that's like the mo most exciting thing is to know that people are. I'm nobody, <laughs> you know, but when sometimes they'll run into people that actually know me and I think that's kind of weird for them. Oh, yeah, it, it's, it's got to be. I yeah. mean. I'm I'm really small time, but I remember the first time I was at a convention I'd only gone to once before, and yeah. someone's like, "Oh, uh, me and my girlfriend are watching one of your videos." I'm like, "That's really random because I'm not yeah. that big. Like, right. we're, I live near here, so yeah. that's cool." But okay, yeah. <laughs> but it is it's weird because it, it can be these random people that somehow run into someone. Six degrees or six something, degrees right? of separation. Yeah, so it's kind of interesting. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, let's see. Do you have any interesting pseudonyms you've used before? If you can talk about them, I know that's one of those weird things. No, I've never used a pseudonym, actually. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Oh, where do you see yourself in five years? Career wise? Oh my gosh. Or overall? Five years. You know, I haven't even thought about that. Retiring. No. Nice. <laughs> no, I'm not going to retire. Um, I, I mean, I love acting. I really don't want to stop acting. Um, I feel like I've, what I do mostly these days is try to take life moment to moment. Because, um, I mean, it's good to have plans because I definitely want to keep going. But I, I think I'm sort of at a point where I want to be open 
to whatever comes my way and to believe that there will be surprises. For sure. You know, because, I mean, it's not always easy because you, you're rejected more than you get work. You know, but you never know. Every now and then something will surprise you. Like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I got You get a call that. back or yeah, you get a call to back or some of your stuff. And, yeah, you just get or you get a, a part when you least expected it. You know, so I, I mean, I hope I'm still acting and, and just moving forward with that. Do you have any goal roles you want to you want to play around with before you retire? Maybe yeah, a big RPG or another fighting character. Um, you know, one of one disappointment was I did. I don't know if you're familiar with. Um, it was only a Wii game, and I wish it had gone to more. It's a lot of Wii games. Yeah, but I wish it had gone to more um, like yeah. um, PlayStation and stuff, so they would have had a bigger. Yeah, games. but it was um, um, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles: The Crystal Bearers. So the sequel. Yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm a big fan. Okay, Fantasy. well, I'm Lael. I played Lael in that. He was I'm a big guy. <laughs> okay. Anyway, he was just such a different character, and I, you know, I would love to have been there to have been a sequel to that. Um, I, I, I they could always port it to the Wii U or something. Yeah, yeah but I, I think I don't think it did great or anything, so I don't know if it'll ever have another life. Um, I love doing in, in Dynasty Warriors Eight. I had a new character, Shushu. Mm -hmm. I love doing him. He was he's been one of my favorite characters from that. that Is it series. going to be a reoccurring character or? I think he's in Extreme Dynasty Warriors Eight Extreme. Okay. But so far, I haven't heard anything. And of course, in anime, I'll do anything. I love to work. Uh, there's a lot that have come out that I didn't have a chance to be in. So uh, I would love Magi to have a third season. That would be nice. I would be to love to run and come back for a third time. Uh, right. You never know. You never we'll know. See. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Naruto and Bleach just kept on yeah, bringing right. new arcs, and you right. never know where yeah. things will end. So I mean, I'm just open to whatever that comes, and I, I enjoy you know any project I get. Awesome. And then finally, uh, if you have any words for your fans who couldn't make it out here this weekend. Oh my gosh. Um, you know, I just, if you're not able to make it, um, I feel bad. Because <laughs> this is a great con. And if you're able, able to make this con here in Spokane, Kona and Echo Con, come. Because it's a great, great convention. And, um, you know, I'm also, if you ever want to just shoot me a question or something, I am on Facebook. You can Facebook me as a friend, and you can also have an uh, official page. You can like that, and I'm on Twitter. Uh, just look me up, and any questions or just want to reach out, I'm, I'm pretty available. And your Twitter handle? Uh, it's Daryl Gilbo, D-A-R-R-E-L-G-U-I-L-B-E-A-U. <gasps> nice, nice. So, I'm around. And I, I love, I'll love putting on pictures of the cons, so you'll get to see even some of the experiences of the cons mm -hmm. that I go to. and. And if I'm ever, when I'm ever doing a project, I like to post that on there, let people know, and awesome. even remind people to watch certain <laughs> ones, even though they're older. That sort no, of that's, there's a lot of classics out there, I mean. Yeah. And, I mean, that's interesting, especially like Sailor Moon Crystal, they, right. they redid it, so I'm like, well, you gotta check out the original. There's, right. there's a lot of, there's yeah. a lot of gems with, if a anime gets remade, it was pretty legit in the first place. Yeah. So go yeah. check out the original. Well, you know, like uh, recently I had a, uh, a, a friend on Twitter uh, post that, oh, by the way, and he, he put some of the actors who had done smaller roles on um, Samurai Champloo, and I was in two episodes of it, and he said, just want to let you guys know you did a, a great job in Samurai Champloo, and you know, that's been out for a while. So, it's kind of timeless. Though. Yeah, so I retweeted it, because he had put the, um, the opening song, which is a great, mm -hmm. oh yeah, it's a great music, and so I, re I re just to remind people, hey, if you haven't seen it, watch it. So, I'm that guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Awesome. Well, it's been a pleasure interviewing oh, thank you. Thank you. you so much for My taking pleasure. the time to sit down and chat with me. My pleasure. Thank you. Have fun this weekend. Thank you. I'm sure I'll see you later. <laughs> Take care, everyone. Boomerang. Red hot kick. Can you go, go, baby? You're a real hero? For real? Thank you.